The ECB has been one of the most aggressive currency devaluing central banks in the world. They have purchased just about everything and yet many of the countries within the EU have fallen in and out of recession or are nearly there. This cannot be resolved with yet another round of QE, it's simply madness. The only bigger offender has been Japan, which has clearly gone completely overboard to the point of no return. The Fed, which has been quite moderate in comparison, but but if history is any guide, there is a never-ending supply of fiat currency always being pushed out to friends in high places. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we're going to talk about QE Finity. This is an important factor when you look at it, not just in the United States, not just from the ECB and all the member countries. When you see this on a global scale, you understand what's happening, and that is all central banks are purposely devaluing their currencies, different rates, so you see the fluctuations, but all of these currencies against real goods are being devalued, and we see that every single day. Most people don't care. They are not paying attention to it. They're busy with other tasks. But of course, what I am here to do is dispel the myths and take the flack. I'm going to show you something here that is very important. And we're going to break down everything that's going on, particularly with the ECB. I have a lot of data for Europe today. But of course, I will show you what's happening. And I wanted to begin with the markets. So it was a wild ride today. The market was up and down. Dow Jones finished 45 points up today. This is important to look at because you can see the effect of what they termed progress on the trade issues. Nobody really knows. Is it happening? Is it not happening? But of course, as long as they make it seem like there is positivity there, well, then everything is a-okay. This has been going on for over a year and the markets have been trading thousands of points higher as a result. We have seen actually worse conditions today with the trade issues than a year ago, but somehow the rhetoric has pushed the market up several thousand points. It's quite interesting to see the way it works. This press release comes directly from the ECB, Monetary Policy Decisions. As expected, they brought the interest rates down and they printed more money. Does that sound familiar? Yes, this is from 2019, but this is the same thing over and over again. The interest rate on the deposit facility will be decreased by 10 basis points to 0.5 in the negative. And that was generally accepted to be the direction they were going to continue to go. The only question was, are we going to bring it down 0.1% or are we going to take it even lower? We'll cover that more in just a second. Net purchases will be restarted under the Governing Council's Asset Purchase Program, APP. We've talked about this at length in previous videos at a monthly pace of 20 billion euro. There we go. So they are starting this again. We just finished the last round of of quantitative easing coming out of the ECB and they're starting it again. Only 20 billion, according to their words, only. However, this is just the beginning. We know that they're going to have to ramp up the printing presses. This is, in fact, QE Finity. They are opening the taps, leaving them open to see what will happen. This, of course, creates a devalued currency and that is the intention. To remain competitive in the marketplace, you need need to have yourself being attractive and your currency, if it's too strong, is not a good thing. That's why we saw Switzerland taking the franc and actually purposely devaluing it against the euro in order to remain competitive. It's crazy, but that's what they do. There have been calls over and over again to weaken the currencies, but I don't think people understand. Yes, we measure them in, for example, against the US dollar, but what are we really devaluing? Devaluing. We are devaluing the currency against real goods. That's why today when you go through college, university, you have your education, you're going to be $40,000 in debt. And 10 years from now, it's going to be $50,000 and $60,000 and $70,000 on and on and on. And you might think to yourself, well, that's okay. That's inflation. That's the way it works. This isn't the way it works. The central banks are doing something they have never done before in history successfully. There have been other instances where central banks have gone out there, printed money every single time they fail. The only difference today, the only difference is that they're all doing it at the same time. Good luck. 
Now, Goldman Sachs actually predicted that they would bring it down. The medium here in the middle shows you minus 20 basis points, and yet they brought it down minus 10 basis points. This just shows you what the analysts were thinking could happen, but here they are taking it step by step. So I think they're gonna do this for a little while, and then they'll just increase it maybe six months later, maybe a year later, who knows, but that's what we're dealing with right now. This didn't go over well with the others though. Not every person wanted to actually decrease rates at this time. They know that this doesn't have the effect that it's supposed to. They know what it does to the currency over a long period of time. And of course, it sets the dangerous precedent that they are willing to do this, go further and further and further and distort the markets permanently. This can never be resolved, but it's always short-term thinking. They're gonna get into the details here in this Bloomberg article. I don't want to cover all the people's names and exactly what happened, but essentially Draghi said, look, we didn't even need to do a vote because it was so obvious that everybody was on the same page. And so we decided to just go through with it. Does that sound like Congress to you? That's basically the exact same thing. Oh, well, you know, I know we didn't give anybody enough time to read that 1500 page document, but they had three hours to sign it so we just made them do so and if they don't sign it then they're not playing ball and it's all their fault so mario draghi leaving the ecb with this on his credentials putting it on his resume and we'll see the effect of it in the coming months will this do something that the previous instances were unable to actually achieve look at what's happening in europe it's getting worse every single year the soft Sovereign debt crisis was never resolved. This is getting worse as time goes on. Yes, you can point to particular factors here and say, well, you know, look at this and look at that. To me, it doesn't matter because when you see it overall, it's not looking good and they're having so much trouble dealing with the issues. Look at this, gross interest income of households in Germany and interest rates. I'll break this down momentarily, but I wanted to show you this because Germany is always pointed to, look at the growth, look how successful, look how fantastic. If you look at the GDP per capita and you look at this stat and that stat, Germany is fantastic. Well, of course, somebody has to be there to show you the other side. Gross interest income of households in Germany. This has been declining for years and years, never going back to where it was prior to the recession. ECB average deposit facility rates, you know where this has been heading for a while. Much of this has been declining and many of the central banks have now gone into the negative and that is worrisome because the effects are obvious. Germany's average 10-year bond rate in the negative as well, that tells you something. All of these central banks, particularly in Europe as well as Japan, they are the biggest offenders, trillions upon trillions of dollars worth of negative yielding bonds, and the world simply doesn't know how to deal with it. Okay, so check this out. Open-ended QE, let that sink in. Much more important than the monthly pace of assets, i.e. even better than we hoped. This is what they did with QE3. They left the tap open in order to tell the market that they would be there to backstop any losses. Instead of saying, we're gonna print $1 trillion here, they simply said, we're gonna print 20 billion euro in this case every single month, and we'll let this go for a period of time. And then we'll decide what's going to occur later. But right now, you're going to get this much every single month. Now think about how ridiculous this policy is. How did they choose this number? Who is going to be the beneficiary of all of these purchases? You know, they go out there and they decide to buy the debt, the assets from those who are connected. You aren't going to see any of that. They do so with all these major corporations, but people don't care. They don't see what's actually going on and it's their own fault. This information is public, but I get it. You got to keep up with the Kardashians. Euro area banks paid $23 billion to the ECB since negative rates were first introduced in 2014. This, of course, the worse it gets as time goes on, it's going to put a bigger and bigger burden on these banks. Now you might think, who cares about the banks? Well, of course, if they're dealing with something, they're going to have to lay people off. We 
saw this in the previous recession, hundreds of thousands of people in the financial industry getting wiped off and then they didn't really all get rehired. So they had to find whatever job they can take. Look at the unemployment rates, even though they have been better since the financial crisis and the sovereign debt crisis within Europe, we have witnessed this at a level that is still persistently high. There's a whole bunch of charts on here if you want to pause the video or if you want to check it out in the link in the description, I will leave that there for you. Two quick things I want to mention. Under the current scheme, a vast majority, 94% of the $2 trillion bank's reserves at the ECB are subject to negative rates. And you're going to watch this getting worse and worse and worse. Think about the repercussions that these banking establishments have to deal with because of what they are encountering with these central bank policies. This is substantially above the reserves at the SMB Swiss National Bank and the BOJ and above the levels at the ECB when negative rates were first introduced. All of this spells a very big problem that people simply feel is being controlled, but it isn't the case. They don't know how to deal with it. If you actually read, not the press release, my goodness, but if you read what these central bankers are saying and they're giving you just a small little piece, even in those statements, they talk about the concerns and the fact that they really don't know what's coming. That's all for this video. If you found it informative, hit the thumbs up button. I do appreciate it. If you want to learn how to build a business, I have a free e-course called the Amazon GPS. There's a playlist here on my channel that you can see for yourself, or you can check it out at the amazongps.com. If you want the financial education that was not taught to you in school, these two books have everything you need. Check it out at the link in the description. If you want the audiobook, that's available at themoneygps.com. More and more and more people are losing their jobs as a result of what's happening with the store closures and with the economic slowdown that is going on. You need to watch this video if you haven't already. Click on it and I will see you there.